Today, we're talking a little bit more about what partnership means, and I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into what's in my heart, and I think you are going to love this episode. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Kathy Kowalik, and I believe that our dogs connect us to the heart and soul of what really matters in life. So hang out, and we'll take a deep dive into the human-dog connection and explore strategies that will inspire you to create legendary, enlightened partnership with your dog. This is the Enlightened by Dogs podcast. Well, hello, Kathy Kowalik here, and welcome to today's episode of Enlightened by Dogs, and I'm excited to talk to you about this topic today. I've been thinking about it a lot, and I think you're going to love it. So in today's episode, I thought I would share some details about what a life of partnership is and what it means to me. Now, you may be thinking, Kathy, hello, we listen to your podcast every single week, and we know what partnership is. Thank you very much. (laughs) However, I do think that this episode is important because I'm sharing a bit more about what's in my heart and It's also for those who maybe just came across my podcast and want to know. So my hope is that this episode expands beyond my already amazing listeners to draw dog moms, more dog moms into the magic of partnership and what is possible. So if you're listening and you think, hey, my friend so-and-so would find this really helpful because I know they're struggling a bit with their dog's behavior and they're really interested in being the best dog mom they can be and they would love to have a brilliant partnership with their dog. They just don't know it yet. So if you have that thought, then please do send them to this episode. Just link them directly to this one. And, you know, it could be a life changer for somebody. So let's do this. Okay, so let's dive into talking about what a partnership lifestyle is at the heart of it. Maybe it would be good to start with having a quick look at what being a partner actually means. So from the dictionary, we find partner defined as either of a pair engaged together in the same activity and being on the same side and a person who does or shares something with another. Now, when I think about how to best describe what my ideal of living in connected cooperation with my dogs, I think of living in partnership and that like that's what we do, right? That's kind of it. So it's a way of living that is harmonious, respectful of one another, each partner is contributing to make the quality of our life together better. Brilliant, actually. One of the things that I think of is the indigenous peoples, our Native American peoples' principle of reciprocity. They talk about shared learning or learning in process together, sharing knowledge in a respectful way, not just coexisting, but intimately interdependent through a two-way flow of benefits and mutual responsibilities. Like, oh yeah, that is what I'm talking about. That is what masterful partnership with our dogs is like. Of course, it's a journey. It's a journey of self-discovery, 
deep listening, personal growth, making mistakes and learning from them as we create a life based on partnership with our dogs. It's a life that centers heart and connection and building a foundation of trust. That's really important. A partnership lifestyle is not a set of rules for dog parents to follow, but it is a set of beliefs about what dogs need to develop and thrive. And it's a set of principles that guide our daily choices to support that development. Mindful dog parents, that would be you and me, we engage and connect with our dogs using emotionally intelligent choices because our dogs and their brain requires connection. How dogs and humans and all social animals learn to respond to life is driven by our interactions with others. It like means everything. It's so important. And a foundation of self-regulation, resiliency, and bonding is built moment by moment in ordinary life, shaping how we perceive the world around us. Is it safe or is it dangerous? Is it calming or is it over arousing? Are we feeling understood or are our feelings being dismissed by those we care about? And so when we dog moms, when we focus on building a foundation based on love and trust and connection and cooperation, our dogs thrive and they thrive mentally physically and emotionally. And that is what we want, right? Now, when we have dogs who shout (laughs) with their bark, resist and act out and are not regulated, right? And in this state of dysregulation, the stress response system has taken over the body's primary functions and most importantly, the thinking function. And that's what happens with our dogs, right? When, when we see them acting out, you hear me say behavior is communication. And so when they are acting out, it's a sign that they're in the state of dysregulation and their stress response system is completely taken over and they, they can't really even think anymore. So as loving, kind dog moms, dog parents, we understand that our dogs need unconditional support and consistent role modeling so they can learn key life lessons about acceptable behavior, responsible decision making. All of that cements into positive behavior patterns that we that we love, that we we makes life a lot easier, right? And you've heard me talk about this before, but social learning is a very, very powerful way for our dogs to learn how we live. So our approach, our partnership approach is centered on relationship and communication, not a one-way transmission of cues and expectations, Instead of focusing on behaviors of our dogs, what we do instead is we focus on our own language and our own communication, our own expectations, our own self-regulation, our own responsibility. And instead of trying to fix like a momentary problem as it crops up like my dog is having a barking fit out the window. It's important to look at what's happening holistically. What led up to this event? Was there stress and cortisol stacking? Was the support 
that my dog needed in place before a potentially difficult situation developed. And what can we do to work this out from a big picture, long term perspective? So that's a more holistic view. And that's what's going to create a life of partnership with our dogs. It all just little by little, baby step by baby step, moment by moment, it all adds up and it becomes brilliant and masterful over time. A partnership approach means that we dog moms engage in self-reflection and mindfulness as a daily practice. Now, Not only does this help directly with our dogs, yay, but it has so many other benefits like our own reduced stress and reduced anxiety, decreased blood pressure, improved sleep, and all the things that cascade off of those improvements, right? It, it is so effective. It makes our life better in so many ways. And of course, it has a very direct influence on our dog and how our dogs behave and how they thrive or not. Now, one of our practices as partners or partners in the becoming is to pause, breathe, connect. So instead of reacting to an unexpected or unwanted event, we take that moment, right? So pause, breathe, something happens, We pause, breathe, connect. And this gives us a moment to get present, mindful, and aware. It gives us that moment to reconnect to our dog and what's really important and to our intention to be our dog's loving guide and role model and, you know, biggest fan and supporter. And then from there, from that moment of pause and connection, we can make our next good choice for like what's what to do next, what is upcoming, okay? Like maybe we realize that we co-created the situation because we didn't communicate clear, consistent, and compassionate boundaries. That happens a lot. And it's important for us dog moms to have, well, for everyone, but we're talking about us here, it's important for us to have non-negotiable boundaries. In the partnership category, a few come to my mind. You hear me talk about these. One is partners don't pull one another around on the leash or we never blast out through the door uninvited, or we always get buckled up in the car to travel safely. So when we are clear and consistent with these healthy boundaries, we are also kind. Our dogs relax, they feel secure, knowing what is true about how we do things as a family. And all of that leads to our dogs better able to self-regulate and to be a more responsible member of the family. As Brene Brown says, and I love this, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. So I thought I would slip in a simple example of clarity, kindness, and boundaries in my own daily life with my dogs. So what is, so here I have a what, why, and how. Okay, so what? The what is when we go out for our morning walk, my dogs are expected to self-regulate and pause at the gate before we leave the safety of our fenced yard. Okay. Why? Well, I have two reasons, which I think are really good. (laughs) These are my reasons and I'm sticking to them. Okay. So my two reasons are one, I want my dogs to understand that it's me, the dog mom, that makes the final decision about if and when it's safe to leave the yard. And number two, 
I want to minimize the chaos that happens with a pack of dogs all racing and running into each other when the gate gets opened. Okay, that's my why. How, all right, here's the how. Well, here's how it goes. We're all present. We're connected. We have a routine that everyone understands and accepts as this is how we do things in our family. And we learn, how did we learn that? We learned that by me taking the lead with being fully present, with using my masterful communication skills, my intention, my body language to let my dogs know that they should hold there at the gate. And then one by one, I call them through the gate so there is no mad rush. They get to choose where they position themselves around the gate, like in the front, in the back, in the middle, off to the side. They get to decide, they get to choose how they position themselves. Do they want to sit or lay down or stand? They get to decide if they're holding still or moving around a little bit. They're responsible for being attentive and responsive to me and my communication. I am responsible for being attentive and responsive to their communication and to my own communication so that this is a smooth and simple transition, yard to trail, okay? That's what we're going for. And so no obedience training was needed to communicate this and to have this this system of understanding with my dogs, right? But clear and congruent intention, my intention and communication was very needed as was boundaries. And so boundaries are all about our own personal needs and desires. It's up to us to communicate this need and desire to others involved. And it's up to us to be clear and kind and consistent. Okay, back to my why. It's really important to me that my dogs don't get hurt doing something foolish and mindless like running into each other in an explosion of energy. Like, nope, that is not happening, not on my watch, right? And so I communicated my needs and my desires and my boundary of we don't go until we're all on the same side, we're partners, we're working for the same common purpose, which is let's go out for a walk in an orderly and safe fashion, right? We all want that. My dogs may be excited and left to their own, like without this routine, without this boundary. Sure, they may be busting out and running like crazy and running into each other and getting hurt. Now, they would not like that. They would not choose to intentionally hurt themselves, but they don't have the same level of cognitive function. They don't have the same prefrontal cortex and processor that I have, right? And so it's up to me. They, they can't foresee the future to that in that detail. And they probably could, but it would be at the expense of learning the hard way, which I'm not, <laughs> I'm not willing to, you know, like sacrifice, right? You know what I mean? And so for me, that became a boundary because it's something that it's really important to me. And so the day I decided that's how it was going to be, I just started con- uh, communicating that congruently with no drama. And we worked it out pretty quickly, actually. It's pretty cool. Okay. So let us wrap up with a question. I have a question for you to ponder. What does a life of partnership with your dogs mean to you? And part two, 
How can you make some simple changes to your life for more ease and cooperation with your dogs? All right, and if you'd love to have some more guidance for how to create a mindful, happy, and connected life with your dog, I've got some upcoming free classes and a five-day challenge coming up over the next few weeks. So if you're not yet on my email subscriber list, just go over to dancingheartsdogacademy.com and there on the home page, you can uh, sign up for a free PDF. You can get that free PDF and then you'll be on my email subscriber list. So I'll be able to send you the upcoming schedule uh, of the free classes and the challenge. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll be doing live stream uh, live streams on my Facebook page, Dancing Hearts, every week for the next few weeks on Thursdays. And da, 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 save the date, our new and improved and better than ever, really awesome five-day Love Trust Grow Challenge is starting on February 14th, just in time for Valentine's Day here in the U.S. I don't know if, do you celebrate Valentine's Day in other uh, countries? I don't, I don't know, but we, we, we do this crazy love thing <laughs> that we call Valentine's Day um, on February 14th here in the U.S., it's a perfect time to fall in love with your dog all over again. So you're going to definitely want to join us. Save the day. We're starting on February 14th, but they'll, you'll be able to sign up for it's free, but you'll be able to sign up for it um, the week like before, the week or two before. I'm getting stuff ready now. Okay. Now, one thing I know to be true is that truly understanding your dog changes everything and leads to loving wholeheartedly and without condition. A trustworthy connection and feeling safe and calm and happy. And it leads to growing a cooperative and brilliant life together. And that is what we'll be working on in the challenge and in the upcoming classes as well. Okay, so lots more coming, but for now, share this episode with your dog friends and be sure you're following me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash dancing hearts. All right, my friend, that is it for today. Thank you so, so much for listening. I really appreciate that so very much. Have an amazing rest of your week. And in the meantime, be brilliant. See you soon. Bye-bye for now. Thanks so much for listening. And hey, if you would like to work with me so that I can help you discover the missing pieces you need so that you and your dog can finally be happy and enjoy life together, then head on over to DancingHeartsDogAcademy.com and request your invitation to join us in the Brilliant Partners Academy when the doors open for the next enrollment. See you next time. And remember, a brilliant partnership with your dog makes your whole life brilliant.